All right, the regular season has uh, come and gone really quickly, so we're ready to start talking some postseason basketball with Alex Caravan. So, Alex, welcome back. Thank you once again for having me. You bet. So let's start with this, because we haven't spoken since uh, you guys wrapped up the regular season title. So just got to start by asking what that was like to you know be on the court, get to celebrate, and, and go through all that uh, and really celebrate that big accomplishment you guys had. Yeah, it's awesome. It's always special just cutting down the nets no matter what. So winning winning a championship is always special. And, you know, just to win the regular season for the first time really since 99, but just, just ourselves, it's it's truly an awesome feeling. And, you know, it was, one, it was one of our goals coming into the year is to really make up for what we did last year in the Big East and just really try to do way better than what we did last year and um winning a regular season championship it's one of the hardest things to do and we we got it done I, I know you guys usually carry around the uh the poster of, of the trophy once you guys won it did it make the trips to Marquette and Providence or is it retired what happens after after you guys win one I don't know where it goes I didn't see it after the scene hall game it disappeared and for the Marquette and Providence games we've started bringing the um Big East tournament championship and okay stuff. So we start looking at that now. All right. So I, I've got to ask, because you win the regular season uh, uh, title on, on Sunday, you still have two games to go in the regular season this re week. I feel like it could have been really easy to kind of get checked out a little bit. Um, not really playing for a, a ton in terms of, you know, standings or anything like that at that point. What was the mindset of the team going into this week? Because I, I, I feel like being able to go 2-0 and this week with two road games after wrapping up the titles. Probably one of the more impressive things you guys have done this year. Yeah, I think it was really just knowing that we have so much more that we wanted to accomplish this year and that, you know, possibly losing those two games, if we were to, you know, just go out there and play and just not play to our identity, then, you know, the one seed's in jeopardy for us in March Madness. And then, you know, alongside – Coach made the point right after the scene hall game that we can make history of winning 18 games in the Big East, which no school has ever done in the Big East. So just adding to more history is special in itself. So that was extra motivation. But just knowing that we're playing for way more than just a regular season championship. For sure. Um, I, I know one thing that was probably a, a welcome development for for you and your game over the past couple of games is that that three starting to, to fall again. I, I didn't feel, you know, getting your shot back a little bit uh, these past couple of games. It felt amazing. It felt <laughs> it felt real good just to see my shots starting to go in now. And, you know, especially these past two games, it's really it's really gone well for my shot. And um, you know, I knew it happened. I knew that the slump would eventually stop the work I put in, just, you know, the confidence that my teammates have in me, really just a collective of those two things, I knew it would eventually come back. So it was, it was an amazing feeling, I'd say. When you're going through a little bit of a, a downstretch there, are you spending time like trying to tweak your shot, like do things differently? Or is it just, hey, like, I know I'm a good shooter, like just got to keep going through it. Everything's been the exact same. Literally, I think um, with what I was doing in before the slump, after whatever it was, I was doing the same thing. I'm never changing my shot. I'm never, you know, questioning what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. It's all like it's all the same. And. Yeah, it's really, really no changes at all. Yeah, shooters got to shoot, so just shoot, exactly. shoot through it. Um, so let's talk last night in, in in Providence a little bit. They get out to that that really hot start, fifteen to two, pretty hostile environment there. Crowds really into it. What's what's going through your head at that moment? Yeah, I think they we just knew that they were going to come out with a lot of energy, and for some, we just weren't expecting that at all. I feel like I think the crowd really got behind them. They made. They made a couple tough buckets, and then we just re didn't really find our groove early in the first media timeout. So, you know, we were kind of caught off guard. But then coach got technical, which probably got us going. And then, you know, in the huddle, we knew that, you know, that was their run. Now we just got to make ours, and we definitely we definitely made a run. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, I, I felt like the turning point a little bit was that, that technical there. You see your coach out there fighting for you guys. That's something that just gives you guys a little extra energy at that time as you're trying to get back in the game. Yeah, definitely. Just because we care a lot about him, we love him, we just want to play our best basketball for him. And, you know, when he sees how badly we're playing and just how bad of a start we got off, and then he's he's releasing the anger on us and he's releasing the anger on the refs, and you can just tell that he's really motivated to get us going. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely. And then he, after he got the technical, he pulled us in the huddle, started barking at us a little more, and then we started, we started playing UConn basketball. Exactly. Um, 
I think one thing that's been interesting, especially these past few games, that, that's kind of reminiscent of last year, is you guys would just go on these big runs and it's like, you know, 15 nothing run. I think at one point last night, I think it was like 40 to nine or something crazy like that. Is that something you're feeling now that like, hey, like when we get rolling, like we could just kind of put teams away with these runs like you get you did last year? Yeah, definitely. That's what I love, especially is just we can go on these big runs just really out of nowhere. And it could really just be demoralizing for a team to where we go on a 10 over run, we play them even for a little bit and go on another 10 over run. So it's really special. I think that's really just what makes us so unique. And I think it's just one of the hardest things to do and one of the hardest things for someone to go up against. Yeah. I, I've got to ask because it seems like the past like three or four games in particular, the, uh, the trash talk, whether it's from the fans, uh, you know, that type of stuff has been at, at kind of a little bit of a higher level than it's been throughout the, the first like three quarters of the season. Do you feel it that way? I'd say so. I think the fans, the fans have been speaking their minds to us a little bit too comfortably. So, you know, sometimes when it gets personal with what a fan says, I, I haven't said anything, but our, my teammates could say something and, you know, we support them fully for that. Yeah. I know uh I know Cam's been the uh the king of the the trash talk there a little bit. I saw I saw Steph yesterday doing a little wave to the crowd there. Is Cam giving out lessons to to the guys? Cam's giving out lessons. Tristan's been sneaky with it though. I don't think people notice enough of Tristan's ways. So I think Steph's picking up on Tristan. So Cam Cam does the talking. Tristan probably does the waves. Steph's been joining on the waves. I was dancing as you caught. <laughs> um yeah, but I think it was just, I think, yeah, after yesterday with what some of the fans were saying to us and saying about family members, I think it was, it was well earned. No more comments on that. <laughs> I, I'm, sh I, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. It no was more that. comments on, um, yeah, I'm not going to say what they were saying, but they were saying something nasty. No, we'll we'll save that. that for an off season one or something. No. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, that game ends last night regular season done i mean you guys accomplished pretty much all you're looking to do in in the regular season how did it feel like you just get a chance after that game last night just to like take a breath before you start thinking you know biggies tournament ncaa tournament be, to kind of just like look back at what you guys were able to do this regular season i think right after the game and even today i was just yeah thinking about going 18 and 2 in the big east like damn we really did that like that's hard and like you looking through all the Big East teams, you're like, damn, like this was a tough conference and we're still not done yet, but still just, you know, just super proud of what we've been able to accomplish so far. Losing three games in the regular season total is already enough of an accomplishment and just it just speaks to how much, how hard we work and just everything that we do at such a high level. And yeah, I think just now, I think we're starting to flip the page to Big East, Butler, Xavier, whoever wins, we'll be playing them. And Super excited about it. So take me through what the week of this Big East tournament is like for, from a player's perspective. Obviously, at this point, don't know quite who you'll be playing. So what what's it like these few days leading up to it? Yeah, we'll probably – oof, I don't even know. I think because last year we played – we knew who we were playing. So now this yeah. year, really, it could go either way with the game. So I think we'll probably – We'll probably be scouting both teams at the same time, I would assume. And I think we definitely just be going through uh, similar actions that both teams run and just, you know, the basis of what they do. So um, we'll definitely just be doing a little bit of mix of both. And, you know, I think it's just helpful for us that both Butler and Xavier play at such a fast pace and they're just both super talented offensively. So I think that's just a good key for us to, you know, start prepping for yeah, you know, in a tournament like this where, you know, you've got to turn around and play the next, you know, night there against a, a team, at least, you know, unlike the NCAA tournament, it's not like you're scouting for a team you haven't really seen during the year or played during the year. Here, at least you've got the benefit of having played these teams before. Does that make it a little easier in terms of the prep and like kind of having to turn around quickly for these teams? Yeah, definitely. It makes it way easier. I think personnel wise you've played these guys twice already so we know what they like to do and what they like you know their tendencies are then the same time our when we do the scouting report and the coaches show us a play it should click in our mind of we should remember that play even though it might have been I guess for this case we haven't played one of these teams over and over a month so but so seeing the play seeing the similar actions and you know some teams do run similar stuff in our league so it's really just all the same stuff
So, you, you know, your mindset, how does it change if it does heading into the NCAA or, you know, both the Big East and NCAA tournament now where you're kind of, you know, it's win or go home at this point? Yeah, that's that's exactly what it changes to. Just knowing that it's a one game season now that if you don't play your best basketball or, or you're not ready for a game or you take an opponent too lightly, your season could end. So all that work that you did in the regular season doesn't mean anything now and yeah. nobody cares what you did. So just knowing that you got to play with the ultimate desperation, just the ultimate level of competitiveness. That's that's what we're made for. I'm excited for it. Yeah. I can't can't wait for MSG. I can't but, wait. What would it mean to you to be able to to win this Big East tournament here and, and take home both, you know, postseason and, and regular season titles? Everything. Just once again, cutting down nets and then an MSG now instead of, you know, Gamble was cool and all, and then cutting down an MSG, that would be cool. And then, yeah. you know, Phoenix, so on. But, um, yeah, I mean, winning the regular season – and the biggies, I think that's something that's extremely hard to do. I mean, we saw Marquette do it last year and just how talented they were. And, you know, we could do it this year. And especially with how much tougher the league is this year and just how many great teams there are, it's going to be a hard task. But I think I think we can do it. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's go into some of the stuff that came in uh, from social here. Let's take a look. Uh, first one, uh, someone called out that they've been noticing you've been kind of doing a little bit more of a, a floater shot recently is that something new you've been uh, trying to work on that to your game i always i haven't been doing it as much as games but in practices and workouts i'd be working on it a lot yesterday was atrocious for the floaters for me i don't think i made one but um in general i've been i usually been having a good touch shot so i try to you know bring it there here and there you've been you've been dunking it a little more lately I have. Thank you for noticing. I have. I like <laughs> I have. It. I like it. <laughs> it's nice to get a nice little dunk here and there. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. Um, we, we were talking a little trash talk stuff earlier. And this one uh, came in. What's the vibes like in the locker room when you're in these hostile environments? Are you guys like talking about what you hear out on the court? You know, either whether it's like, you know, in passing or after the game, that type of stuff. Oh, yeah, definitely. After the game, we definitely... <laughs> Went over, especially last night, we definitely went over what people were saying, a couple chants that we heard, all that yeah. stuff. And then I guess social media helps us see what we saw too with what fans were doing and what you guys were chanting too. So, um, yeah, it was definitely, it was definitely funny. And it was definitely, I think it just gets us going. And then locker room, I think our just initial reaction was just yelling, screaming, and just so much excitement. Yeah. Yeah, what's like because I I feel like it's kind of like I I remember talking about this with you I think earlier in the year where it's like hey you guys are somewhat starting to play from like a national perspective a little bit of a villain role like not okay. a not a hundred percent but it's there it seems like it really has picked up a little bit the past few weeks it has I mean it's a compliment to what you yeah. done is as a program I mean everyone wants to beat us and. You know, we're fully ready for that target on our back. We've been having that target on our back for a while now. And just knowing that, you know, it really makes a team's day when they have the chance to be UConn. And, you know, we take it as a compliment. I'm going to take a quick break from the interview to tell you about my friends at Martin Rosol's Meats. This fourth generation Connecticut family business produces kielbasa, hot dogs, sausages, and deli meats using Martin Rosol's very own original recipes. Their products can be found in grocery stores, delis, restaurants, and hot dog stands throughout the state. And if you're looking for your fill right away, check out their retail store in New Britain. For more information, visit martinrosalsinc.com and go support a UConn fan-owned business. And now, back to the interview. Uh, this one, uh, about not to, not to look too far ahead, but you know the possibility of the NCAA tournament, you guys don't have to get on a plane going through Brooklyn, <laughs> Boston. How cool would that be, especially after... Uh, getting stuck in milwaukee with your plane issues uh, last week that was horrible <laughs> that was horrible um it's fantastic that's the one that's the last time i want to get on a plane is to phoenix and yeah. um yeah i mean having possibly having games in brooklyn and boston with our fan bases there i think that's gonna be a huge advantage for us and that's just something that we need to take advantage of if that's the case and to you know really help us you know gain momentum and gain adrenaline heads in these games just more adrenaline which we yeah. need i guess <laughs> but, yeah uh, i mean uh, you you being a massachusetts guy uh, it's gotta be pretty cool if you get the chance to go play at the garden there at the td garden um and yeah. uh, kind of get to play in front of your hometown there 
I can't wait. I want that. I want that to happen so badly. I'll have. I'll definitely have a bunch of family there. It'll be. It'll be an exciting time. Uh, let's see what else we got here that came in. All right, this one, uh, I saw a couple people uh, tweet in about this. Can you explain the relationship between Cam and Yusuf? Because it seems like on, on the social clips, it seems like they're, uh, they're two uh, peas in a pod there a bit. Yeah, it's um, Yusuf loves Cam. Well, Yusuf in general loves everybody on the team. He just loves Cam to a uh, another level, and um, he tries. He he always compliments Cam. He always, you know, praises Cam for what he does. And Cam, he's a lot older than Yusuf, so he's just Yeah. trying to relax, chill. He doesn't really like the childish games that or childish stuff that Yusuf does, and um. So they could they could butt heads a lot, but then they're like best friends at the same time. It's it's like in practices they always go at it because Cam complains that Yusuf fouls him too much, and then Yusuf starts barking back, and then Yusuf tries to make up for those arguments by showing him love. And I think Cam's so mad at him from practice, but then the games they both know they got to get ready for the game, and um. I guess he's setting him screens and passing for him during the warm up. So it's a good relationship. <laughs> it's complex, but it's good. all right um all right let's see all right let's go to this a little bit so i'm gonna i'll, I'll be honest I, i'm ripping this off a little bit from something i saw on the uh on the big 10 uh network and uh box that they did with zach Eady. so we'll, we'll, this will be our Russell, martin Russell's uh meat sponsored segment here so in the video i don't know if anyone else saw this uh on, on instagram they did a video where they asked zach Eady to talk about some of the other teams in the conference they threw out some uh like superlative type things and said you couldn't pick Purdue and, and you had to pick the other school so I'm gonna throw a couple of these your way and uh now the Big East season is done we got Big East tournament uh time like uh we'll, we'll have a little fun with the conference so you ready for this I can't pick UConn. yeah you can't pick UConn for these so All right. All right. so you gotta gotta pick some other schools here um okay this we'll, we'll start with this one best visitors locker room Best visitors locker room. Um. So uh, before, are we counting like St. John's, like MSG home arena, or like Carnegie? Are we counting like that, or are we? What are we doing for that? That's my one question. Oh, oh, that's uh, I'll, I'll give you MSG if you want to say MSG. All right. Well, they get the home locker room, so it's not them. Um, best locker room. Marquette's is good. Marquette has a great locker room. And then I'm looking at the teams right now on my phone. Marquette's good. And then there was one. DePaul's is actually a good visitor locker room, I'd say. Yeah, because that's brand new, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say Marquette and DePaul have good visitor locker rooms. All right. This this kind of goes on the theme we've been talking about earlier. Um, toughest student section in the Big East. <laughs> Creighton. Creighton's is up there. Creighton. Creighton lets us hear it. Creighton's. Yeah. Creighton. Providence. I know they were on spring break yesterday, but Providence is a good student section. And then I'm going to throw in Nova. I'm not going to lie. Nova. Nova is a good student section. I think theirs is very underrated for the Big East. And then Marquette. I, I didn't realize how packed it was until I seen after the game, just how many students were there. A little four way tie, I'd say, between those. All right. All right. Um, okay. So th this, uh, this is, we get into a couple fun ones here um, with other schools here in the leagues, favorite uniforms in the league outside of, again, you can't say the, any of the UConn uniforms. <laughs> no, I love our throwbacks, but um, I like Xavier's uniforms. I like those. I like the white ones that they wear. It's like a little alternate one, not the, Yeah. the little alternate white one, which I like. I like those that they wear. And then St. John's had a good throwback jersey. I like the throwback. They started wearing it this year. I thought Yeah. it was cool. I'd say those two. I'd say All right. those two jerseys in particular. And then Creighton, when they do um the um cancer cancer awareness, I like the pink jerseys that they wear. Yeah. Like those three are elite. All right. All right. Solid ones. All right. Um, this is a fun one I thought they threw at Zach Eady, so I'm gonna throw it at you too. Uh most entertaining coaches in the league. <laughs> Oh boy, without Coach Hurley. So, Yeah. um, We know no one can top him, so. yeah, no, clearly no one can. 
you got to throw Shaka's co coach smart up there. I don't, I'm not going to use it. coach smart up there. I think he's he also provides energy off the on the sidelines, and you see, you see, um, coach smart. Ooh. Hmm. I like um, Coach Patino. Coach Patino, okay. some stuff on the sideline too. And then I'll uh, say Coach Cooley too. Coach Cooley, I think you just see he just, he gets the fans involved, and you definitely see the passion that he has. So, so yeah, I'd say those. Solid three though. there. Do, 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 it's do, tough. Do. Like it's tough complimenting other coaches, and I just can't compliment Coach Hurley. It's like I don't know what to say about these. <laughs> Do you think at some point next year, Coach Hurley's got to pull out the uh, the all white suit for the whiteout, like Rick Pitino did in that uh, game against St. John? <laughs> I don't know if I can see him wearing the all white suit. Um, I don't think that'll ever happen. <laughs> I mean, now, now he's got the title ring. Like, no excuse. Like, you got to go like Pitino did to the what? Well, where'd he go? Like Armani Taylor to like get it personally made. Like, you could yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe you could. Maybe you could. Coach Miller was a good one too. I think for sidelines, I think he's underrated too. For what he yeah, does the oh, for sure. Um, all right. Uh, best road trips in the conference. Best road trips. There's one I could cross off that we recently have. That was not a fun road trip. Um, Providence. I like the Providence road trip. Nice hour trip. You know, you drive yeah. there in an electric environment where you get booed the entire time. That you. you like yesterday we get a win we drive back and then um that's a fun one hmm i'd say province really and then uh st john's when um we play at msg msg is always a fun road trip just going yeah. to new York city is always fun all right well that, that was fun going around the league just having a, a little fun with the league in advance of the tournament here so uh little compliments for every team i think i gave so yeah. there you go but you know that's the last compliment you'll hear from me until <laughs> my time here is done. There you go. That's, that's how it should be. So we have a have a little fun there, and uh, you did something nice for them. So now they uh, maybe they won't chant quite as uh, as harshly at you um, going I forward. Did. I did. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, end of regular season thought it could be fun a time to do a couple uh, teammate superlatives too. So uh, <laughs> what one of my favorite things uh, in the. Uh, in the intros are the, are the handshakes Who, who's got the best handshake uh in the starting lineup there i generally think it's me i really think it's me but if it's not me i'll go tristan the, okay all, the call celebrations yeah. it's going to be undefeated but i like mine the best it's simple and it's yeah. yeah simple um who's got the best taste in music on the team oh oh jesus Oh wow. Um Donovan's is just one artist the entire time, so it's not him. Apostolus, I'm gonna say Apostolus. Apostolus plays some really bad music, but at the same time, he knows like every song in the world. So like if okay. you want like a certain like genre, he could play it and like you could be like, all right, AP. But then like when we warm up for practice. No, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> all right, interesting. Um, all right, I think there's an obvious one to this that everyone brings up. Um, so you could say that, but I want the like like the second choice for this one too, and that's who could you see later in life most likely to be the coach of UConn? <laughs> um, all right, not the obvious one. Um, oh, besides Cam. Cam? Cam, yeah, that's the that's the obvious one. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cam, hmm. Hassan. Oh, okay. All right. Interesting answer, but I'm gonna say Hassan. All right, that is new. Why, why Hassan? I feel like he'd be a good coach. Like once he gets like the details down, and like he starts getting in the groove of the coaching world. Yeah, he has a great personality. Great, you know you know, connection, like, way to connect with others. All right. Say Hassan. Coach with the headband or no headband? Jeez, headband. Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say, yeah, he'd definitely wear a headband. You like that shot at the uh, 10 and the half yesterday from Hassan? 
I was so confused. I was so I, I did I thought he didn't know how what how much time was left in the half. So I thought he was dribbling backwards. I was like, what is he doing? And then I loved the shot, of course. We were all <laughs> that was definitely that was probably my favorite play of the night yesterday was that shot. That's how, that's how you the end the half there ball. after after how it started. You ended that way. It's a good sign. Yeah, then Donovan got a three in, which was Yes. I was early shot clock three. Which I was very surprised by, but if he missed that, is are, are are the coaches yelling at him? Um, not during the game, but okay. in the film room, possibly. They would possibly just—I don't think they'd yell at him. They'd just be confused at him. All right. Well, after he hit that one, I wanted to jack up like three more last night, but uh, I'll take I'll take what I can get. I I think he wanted the same thing too. I'm not. Gonna... <laughs> um. It seems uh, while we're talking about him, it seems like. Looking back, especially, I feel like Seton Hall this week, his game's just gone to another level. Are you seeing that as well? Yeah, definitely. He's way more comfortable out there. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think he's realizing now how dominant he could really be. And I think there's a whole nother level of dominance that he could reach when he starts, you know, the inside game, posting up all that stuff once he starts, you know, unlocking that. But, um. Yeah, I think really just what he does defensively. I mean, damn near averaging like four or five blocks these past two or three games. It's something like scary for opponents to go up against. And it's just such a relief for us on defense to know like if we're over pressuring and we get blown by, we know we got, you know, yeah, the Great Wall of Bristol, as they say. So yeah. block it all. There we go. Uh, um, Clean. Yeah, Queen Kong right there to uh to clean up. I I know as a team you guys are always working to to improve and and make tweaks here or there. As you head down this stretch, whether it's Biggie's tournament heading into the NCAA Boy tournament, what are a couple areas of focus still for this team heading into this uh, stretch run? I think it's just um just adding some more offensive plays. Uh, the coaches always like adding wrinkles to different offensive sets, so. Teams start to know what type of plays we like to run. We just, you know, change it up a little bit. But yeah. I think other than that, I think it's just always staying ready and just staying consistent. I mean, it's March, the best time of year. I don't know how it's March already, but. Yeah, I, did this season feel like it flew by to you? Because to me, like, I can't believe it's already like middle of March. You're going to be middle of March in Big East tournament time. It's the fastest by far. It's It's gone by scary fast. I'm not going to lie. Not not talk back too much, but do do you have a favorite moment of the the regular season? Yesterday was fun, definitely fun, just for everything behind the game. Yeah. Um. Of course, the regular season championship, just winning that was a lot of fun. Empire Classic was fun, just winning the first championship together. Yeah. Really, I don't know why I keep thinking championships, but yeah, championships. Hey, hey, that's gay. If you're if you're bringing home trophies, that's a good sign usually. So exactly, yeah. we, we we gonna get some more dancing from you on the sidelines this March. <laughs> I didn't realize you were. I didn't realize you saw me dancing, and then I thought on camera I was really dancing. I was dancing in celebration, and then um, my friend he plays at um Brown. He was at the game, and he started. He started doing that, like, hands up and, like, started jumping, too. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do it, too. So I started doing it. I mean, the clip I had was great. It's like, you doing that, Cam's doing his, like, get out of here, whatever it is that he does. So oh, it's yeah. how you sum up the night, right? Yeah, you you could look at a different person in that video, and you could see how we all reacted <laughs> differently, but with similar emotion. Yeah, it's a fun, it's, it's how you end a fun night there and uh fun regular season. Um. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think it's going to be an exciting, uh, exciting final uh, month plus, hopefully here. So uh, mm -hmm. keep doing these throughout, and uh, best of luck at MSG. Best of luck going forward, and uh, I'm sure we'll chat before the uh, NCAA tournament, and we could we could talk about bracket and stuff. Yes, we will. We can definitely do that. All right. Well, Alex, as always, uh, appreciate it. Best of luck this week in New York. Thank you so much.